Good afternoon, boys and girls, and welcome to the 60th episode. Hang on, I've just seen that things are looking a little bit wonky here. The 60th episode of Love at First Scent with me, Persil is coming to you today live from YouTube. Thank you very much for helping me get to 60, by the way. We're, this isn't, we're not going to treat this as an anniversary episode, but anyway, 60 is still a bit of a, a bit of a landmark. So, like I said, thank you to everybody for tuning in. Um, usual stuff that I always say at the beginning, please consider subscribing to my channel. Please uh, leave a comment, ask a question, whether you're watching live or watching uh, the, the recording. Um, please consider supporting me on my coffee page, a link to which you will always find in the video description below. And let me just go on the old tablet to make sure that everything is coming through. I'm pretty sure it, I saw one comment from Peggy. Peggy, thanks for tuning in again. And what we are doing today is at least one, maybe a couple of these new Armani Privés. Um, and I know, hello, hi Fahmi, hello Reza. I know exactly which one I would like to uh, start with because there is one of these that has been Compo matching clothes, says Ashfaq. Yeah, not planned, I know. <laughs> You're right, because I can see it there and thinking, oh my goodness, we're all just sort of blending into this, this, this wall of beige, and I'm sort of trying to shuffle these things around as well to make sure that, but anyway, I think this is the one. And a lot of you will be aware that the uh, Armani Privé collection um, is uh, further divided, subdivided into other collection, and one of them is Les Or, you know, the waters, the lighter ones, and these are four new O. And this is called Jasmine Cusamono, Jasmine Cusamono, and the one thing that I do know about it already is that it has been composed by Dominique Ropion. Not to disrespect, shall we sort of bring this in to fill up the gap, because I'm, I'm like, nature hates a vacuum, right? I'm kind of getting annoyed that the space isn't being filled properly, sorry. No disrespect to the other perfumers, but uh, all of whom are, you know, very, very highly regarded perfumers, but I very much would like to know what uh, an O, you know, a sort of watery jasmine made by um, Ropion would smell like. So we will start with this. I have the press release for them. Let's see, we may be able to smell a second one. And please, you know, have comments, questions, etc., on this range coming. Have any of you already tried these? Um, right, so here we go. This is the bottle for it as well. So this is the Jasmine Cusamono from Armani Privé, as you can see. Standard um, Privé bottle. Let me get, the, let me pop that there. How's the composition looking? I don't think I'm going to be getting any jobs as a set designer anytime soon. I hope this is going to be good because, you know, it is Armani Privé. You, we do expect a fair amount from the range. We certainly expect a lot from Hopion. Did I um, did I smile long enough for the thumbnail, by the way? I always mess up this thumbnail business. Okay, here we go. Right. <coughs> You've all gone. You've gone. All gone suspiciously quiet. Are we going to get anything? Ah. Well, I have to say, certainly the way it starts. Drum rolls, as Peggy. Yes. If you wanted. If you wanted a really, really light, translucent, light-filled, um, sorry, I missed the first minute. Is this unisex? Says Anne. Yeah, oh, the, the entire Privé range is unisex, and you know what we think of that word here. Any all perfumes are unisex, but if you wanted a, sh a very, very sheer, light-filled jasmine, quite a citrusy sort of jasmine, um, then. And then you 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 could do a lot worse than this, I think. Um, but there's something about it that because it, it's 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 definitely it, it's it's recognisably a jasmine, but all of the sort of mothball mothbally indolic facets, or most of them anyway, have been taken away. But I guess it retains that very, very gently banana-like feel that you associate with Ylang Ylang, you know, the, 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 how it's, it's, I think, the level of bananariness that makes the difference, for me anyway, to my nose, between Ylang Ylang and Jasmine. But that suggestion is in there. 
but there's also a I don't know, is there a sort of incense feel, or am I just thinking there's an incense feel because the name sounds Japanese like? The, the, we are, as I said, we are going to read a press release, but. And it's making me, you know how, you know how, um, Eta Libre d'Orange's Jasmine and Cigarettes, you know, Jasmine and Cigarettes, which is one of my favorite Jasmines ever, you know how that's got a very fresh air quality to it, despite the cigarettes, which I don't think in that perfume come through really until the dry down. That's, this has got that sort of feel to it. So may, maybe, maybe, um, maybe there's an, a sort of incense feel to it, but I'm quite taken with it. But I, I, if the brief was to create, which I imagine it was, a fairly translucent jasmine, the first, the first, the, the opening definitely fulfills that. But I'd be very, very curious to know how how this continues. Mm. Consider me intrigued in a good way. It's it's sort of straightforward without being simplistic, or maybe I should say it's simple without being simplistic, which is sometimes a very, very difficult trick to pull off in perfumery. By the way, I'm, I can take a request, the other three, in case you're wondering, because we ought to try and do one more. There's a Gardenia Antigua, so a, a, a Gardenia from Antigua, and there's there's a Te Yulong, so a, a, a Chinese uh, tea scent, I suppose, and there's a Rose Milano. I know which of those three I'm kind of veering towards, but we'll 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 take requests after I've done the press release. Let's see uh, what the other comments are. Is this Armani following Maison Christian Dior's footsteps in catering to the Asian market? Says Aperol Spritz. I think they sort of started that a while ago, so this could be a, an, an addition to that. Uh, Tomash says, hello again, citrusy jasmine and banana sounds sweet. Yeah, but there's this kind of saline quality to it as well. It's it's not overly sweet at all. And then Aperol spreads, it says the T1, and Fahmi says the T1, and Angeline says the T1. Hi, Angeline, by the way. So we won't be doing the T1, that's for sure. No, I, get, I guess unless we get other votes to the contrary, we we're going to have to do the T1. But let's look at the press release very, very quickly. There will be a blotter update for this one as well. For those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, and I always stress in these videos, they are live videos and they are about first impressions, but we cannot make a final judgment on a perfume based just on first impressions. We need to wear them on skin, we need to go away, think about them, etc. And so with a sort of nod to that, um, a few hours after the initial broadcast, I add to, oh, Peggy says tea as well. How come you guys are all tea freaks wanting to know about the tea? I was most curious about the rose, but but then because I, we will do the tea, we will do the tea, and then I will I will do the rose in my own time. Um, I add to, what I was saying is I add to the video description below a few uh, hours after the broadcast, and I say how the perfumes developed on the blotter, just to give you an idea of what the dry downs were like. Anyway, Armani Privé. Um, go on then, Rose, please. No, no, you can't change your mind there. Was that a Latizan pun, says Peggy. Ooh, now, now, we're, now we're getting very meta. We're getting very perfumey meta. Right, so since 2004, so says the press release, um, Giorgio Armani translates the essence of his Armani Privé Haute Couture collection into four complementary fragrance collections, Les Eaux, which is these, La Collection, La Terre Précieuse, and uh, Les Mille et Une Nuits. I can't really say that very quickly, but A Thousand and One Nights, each uh, being an invitation to olfactory journeys through the finest ingredients. In 2020, a new compelling and colourful chapter unfolds in Les Eaux, fresh and vibrant collection with the introduction of floor, sorry, four floral and citrus scents conveying Armani's eclectic influences, Te Yulong, Gardenia Antigua, Rose Milano, and Jasmine Cusamono. So I won't do the T1 now in case we're going to read that. Let's look at the jasmine. Inspired by the Japanese floral compositions from which it takes its name, is Kusamono a floral composition? That This is my, completely ignorant here, sorry. And echoing Armani's love for simple Asian aesthetics, Jasmine Kusamono is a transparent and airy jasmine scent, yeah, give it that much, that highlights one or several, one or several or one of several should that be, several natural elements to elevate them to new heights. Crafted by master perfumer Dominique Ropion, the luminous fragrance opens on a Nashi pear accord. Really? That's true. 
yeah, maybe something slightly fruity in there, maybe. Combined with pink pepper essence, so that could have been the sharpness, but it wasn't overt at all. Lily of the Valley Accord, okay, that I think I would agree with, actually. That real, real clean, that I would agree with, yes. Completely, yes, actually. Hmm. And, and not far removed from Jasmine, of course. And a reinvented aquatic and salty writing of Sambac Jasmine Absolute, then highlight, hang on, where's this sentence going? Never mind. Then highlight its vegetal, fruity, and luminous facets contrasted by a musky and woody dry down of cedarwood and sandalwood essences. Okay, maybe slightly dubious sentence construction, but at least it's full of concrete materials. Revealing, revealing jasmines, it should be, transparent, aquatic, and almost airy facets, Jasmine Cusimano introduces the perfect combination between the delicate and crystalline floral note, precious cedar, and sandalwood essences. Um, I'd go along with that. I mean, cedar sandalwood starts making you think that actually it, it's weightier and has got more oomph. This, this is, this, this is, you know, I would, I would agree more with the, all the transparent, transparent business. Aquatic, I would say saline rather than aquatic, which to me is something different. You know, aquatic is a bit dubious. Saline is interesting. An interesting white, uh, sorry, a saline white floral to me sounds much more interesting and is more interesting than an aquatic white floral. Um, but the lily of the valley, yes, totally. I mean, I'm, now it's almost like where I'm thinking, how did I not get that first time round? Hmm, interesting, interesting. Did I miss a comment? Uh, Oh, Tashara saying hello, hello to you as well. So I guess we should do the T one. What do you think, people? Let's do one more. Let's do the T one. Let me try and rearrange a little bit here because otherwise things will start getting very messy indeed. So let's pop that there. Where was the T? The T is here. So this is Te Yulong, and we will finish on this one. And I will, I will then give you permission to start your weekend. Although, of course, those of you in Indonesia. What time is it there now? It must be like gone 1 a.m. Um, so you, you've definitely, you've, you've started the weekend already. Let's, at the risk of making things far too cluttered, let's pop that here. And we have got some press material on this one as well. So this is Te Yulong from um, Armani Privé. 1.18 a.m. here, says Peggy. Goodness me. And 18 past midnight. For... <gasps> I'm so, I'm so, I'm so grateful. Or are you just insomniacs? <laughs> Am I just <laughs> making your problem worse? But this is, there you go. Uh, smile for thumbnail person, a show the teeth. Yes. Anyway. Right. Get another blotter. Is this going to be good? Um, and I will tell you who the other ones are made by as well, in case you're interested. Same in Singapore. The bottle looks imposing. But I like the Armani Privé bottles though, because I think they are, I like the, the the design thinking that went into them. I think there are not many um, unisex brands that have bottles that convincingly convey the idea of unisex. I don't think Frederick Mal bottles are very unisex, but I think these ones are. Right. Ah, oh gosh, do you know what this reminds me of? No, obviously you have no idea what it reminds me of because you can't smell it. Can you smell that? Can you smell that? This reminds me of, in the nicest way, how many of you have smelt or remember, I don't even know if it's part of the range, do you remember Escal Apondicherry from Dior? When they did their Escal collection, there was an Escala Portofino, uh, Escala Pondicherry, at least one other. I loved Pondicherry, um, the perfume, um, because it was just such a great citrusy cardamom tea scent and I just bought so many bottles for Madame Persolace because I loved smelling it on her. I wonder if it's still there. It, it was, and this immediately reminds me of that because the tea note, the, the, the bergamot-like Earl Grey-ness of the tea note here is really good. I'm not getting the cardamom like I got from, from used to get from the Dior. Certainly very convincing opening, really, really bright tea. Um, and, 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 and actually, I'm kind of thinking more Earl Grey rather than Yunnan, which is, I'm guessing, what the reference in the name is. Um, just slightly, slightly um, 
burnt facets. Uh, are you talking about Dior's juice in kind of a quilted design bottle, says Thomas? Yes, yes, it was those ones. Absolutely, sort of round, but with a kind of um, quilted pattern. This, this... So, what was I saying? It's got those citrusy facets of tea. It's got those slightly burnt facets of bergamot, but not overly. Yulong is a river in China, says Anjali. Ah, thank you very much. But also just a sort of hint of woodiness in the background. Nice work to start with. Again, will be really, really fascinating to see how this develops afterwards. And I think that one, I think actually I'm more drawn to trying that one on skin than I am the other one, even though I will obviously try the other one as well. Uh, Jasmine Cusimono is marketed towards women according to Fragrantica, says Anne Calhar. That's, that's fine, but you know, all perfumes are unisex. Trust me, all perfumes are unisex. Uh, does Armani Privé disclose the perfumer, says Umberto? Yes, th this one was Ropion, and I will find out in a sec which one uh, this one was as well. So let us go back to the press release and look at the tea. A unique encounter between all facets and natural contrasts of green tea and black tea extract. Te Yulong invites a sensory journey through, sorry, invites to a sensory journey, should be on, shouldn't it? Through the Chinese lands of the Yunnan region and encapsulates the beauty of the Yulong Mountains, known for its tea trees that grow high in altitude and its magnificent landscapes, the peaks are home to one of the most beautiful black teas. While black tea brings the smoked facets being more marked, almost woody, green tea, mandarin and lime essences, yeah, I'd, I'd agree with that for sure, transform the fragrance as the fusion bursts with freshness and life. Something was definitely lost in translation there, never mind, but we got green tea, mandarin, lime, created by Julie Massé from Man. Te Yulong is the perfect balance between the freshness of green tea and citrus and the intensity of black tea and smoked woods. Certainly at the start it is. Starts really beautifully. The fragrance swirls smoky notes into green facets, backed by an impression of radiant freshness delivered by citrus notes. Mmm. And very, very favourable shades of the Dior that I mentioned. Okay, super quickly then. The Gardenia was made by Dora Bagriche of Ferminish, and the Rose was made by, by, by uh, Daphne Bouget and Marie Salamagne of Ferminish. So, ah, and interestingly, the, those three were all made by women, and the Jasmine is the only one made by a man, which is curious, okay? Not that, that particularly means anything. Um, uh, Maddie says, really like how it sounds. Love your looks, by the way. Really nice. You're matching her. <laughs> yeah, I know. This was good. Somebody else said that. It's totally not. Even down to the black and the... No, that was... Uh, trust me, that was completely, completely not planned. I just sort of saw this and thought, hmm, have, haven't, haven't worn that for a while. Are we trying the rose, says Tashara. We haven't got time right now because I've got to go, but um, I will try it. Uh, sounds like succinct PR, says Ashwa. I know, right? I mean, no messing around. Just sort of saying what... Th there's so often the way that if if the PR material sounds confident and they're not kind of, you know, trying to blind you with science or give you a, a smoke screen, you kind of think, okay, so that probably means that the juice is going to be uh, quite decent. Angeline says, I feel that the enti entire uh, Armani Privé range is overall interesting and well done. Yes, taken as a range, I would totally agree. You know, obviously when you have so many, there are some you're going to like less or more than others, but as a range, it's very, very strong. And it's always interesting to see what they've done. And thank you very much for jogging my memory. I did do an, a separate Armani Privé video a while ago. So when I'm updating the information on this video, i.e. in the next couple of hours or so, I will try to link to it uh, in the video description below. But until then, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you sincerely, really honestly and truly for helping me to get to episode 60. I can't believe that we're at episode 60. Um, and I genuinely can't remember if I said this on Wednesday when I did some videos, but thank you all of you for helping me get over the 2000 subscriber mark. That is that is quite a, a, a milestone for me as well. So have a good weekend. Blotter update coming up soon. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. Feel free to leave a comment or ask a question if you're not watching the live version. Uh, and I guess that's it. Stay tuned to social media for information on when the next episode will be. Take care, bye.